D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this uh, video, and you can read them for yourself, or you could just watch this video, and I'm going to read them to you and everything, and then we'll discuss them and stuff. Um, I want to just say also, uh, before I get started, that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm even more these days. And small channels like mine, we just keep getting shoved further and further to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get started on these stories. So... For my first story this week, and this comes from Deadline, my favorite. Um, so John Wick's Chad Stahelski is tapped to helm Michael B. Jordan-led Rainbow Six for Paramount. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't know too much about Rainbow Six and everything, but we'll get into it in this article. But Chad Stahelski is, oh, and the the the, the Rainbow Six thing, so um, Michael B. Jordan, and they'll talk about it in here. You know, I'll get to it when we get to it, but... Uh, Chad Stahelski, uh, I like him a lot and everything. Uh, I'll talk more when we as we read this article. So let's get started on it. There's those two men right there. Both very handsome. Okay, so it says, Chad Stahelski, John Wick franchise, um, yeah, uh, has been tapped uh, to direct the Tom Clancy adaptation, Rainbow Six, for Paramount Pictures, Deadlight can confirm. Details as the plot of the film starring Michael B. Jordan are under wraps, but it marks the studio's follow-up to the uh, actioneer Without Remorse, which uh, went to Amazon for distribution in April 2021. Now, I watched that movie. It was okay. It was okay. It wasn't that great, though. Uh, but Michael B. Jordan is very talented. I do enjoy Michael B. Jordan. I like him a lot. I think he's great. I also love Chad Stahelski. He's great also. Uh, following the COVID pandemic's throwing uh, throwing of theatrical into dis uh, disarray, while it's not yet clear whether the new film will go to theatrical or streaming, Jordan reprises his role as the CI operations officer from former Navy SEAL John Clark, and that's um like a spinoff of the um oh what's his name I'm I'm drawing a blank um shoot. I can't remember, but uh, we'll talk about if they maybe they say it. But uh, anyways, producers uh, are Jordan Elizabeth uh, Outlier Society, uh, Akiva Goldsman, and uh, Akiva Goldsman, ugh, and Greg uh, Lassons. Oh gosh, it doesn't matter who these people are. Uh, Stahalski launched his career as a stuntman and stunt coordinator before making his directorial debut in 2014's John Wick, starring Keanu Reeves. Also, he was, it says that he was a stunt person. He was actually Keanu Reeves' um, stunt person in the Matrix movies. He he uh, he uh, did, the, he was his stuntman in a, uh, for Keanu Reeves, so That's which I think is very fascinating. Um, he's gone on to direct all installments in the Summit. Uh, Entertainment and Lionsgate action franchise, including the upcoming John Wick Chapter 4, which I'm quite excited about, which will premiere as SFX SFW 2023 and be released in theaters on March 24th. I'll be there front and center. Other projects in the works from him include Netflix feature Black Samurai. I didn't see that. The Warner Brothers assassin pick uh, Shamambui. Uh, Sham Shiba Mui. I didn't see that either. And the Sony TV series project Nemesis, to name a few. I didn't see any of those. He also did um he also did the reshoots for Birds of Prey, which I mean it didn't save that movie, but you know, uh he did what he could. That movie was doomed from the beginning. News of Stahovsky's involvement with Rainbow Six was first reported by The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, the filmmaker is represented by, and who nobody cares who he's represented. So this is, um, is it Jack Jack Ryan? Jack Ryan. So this is a spin. So uh, John Clark is a spinoff of Jack Ryan. And Rainbow Six is a team that he creates, and uh, they're going to do like an international team. So it'll be kind of uh, fun. I did see some people comparing this to that um, uh, 355 movie with uh, um, Jessica Chastain, which I have to just say, that movie, in my opinion, wasn't that great. But, uh, you know, and this might just be the male version of that. I, I don't know. 
Um, I'll watch it because I like both these people. I don't know if I would go to the theater to see it. If it was on streaming, I would definitely watch it. If it's in the theater, I would have to see the trailer to really sell me on it. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to diss on anybody, but I'm not just going to run out to the theater to just watch any, you know, Chad Stahelski, uh, Michael B. Jordan movie. It has to look good kind of thing. And I know you feel the same. But I I am happy for both of these people. You know, I like Chad Stahelski. I wish him nothing but the best. And I also, I like uh, Michael B. Jordan. I wish him nothing but the best. So let's see how this movie turns out. And I wonder who they're going to, who they're going to hire, like in terms of talent from other countries, you know, um, uh, that'll be fun to see who they get. And uh, yeah, so that is my first story of the week, you guys. So for my second story of the week, this uh, comes from Deadline again. And uh uh, as you can see here, it's about Michael uh, Jackson, but it says uh, Emancipation's Anton Fuqua to direct Michael Jackson's biopic for Lionsgate. Uh, John Logan's script, a Bohemian and Bohemian Rhapsody, Graham King producing with Estate. Uh, I uh, before we get started, um, I I don't know how I feel about this, uh, but we'll we'll see. I mean, l- let's just check it out. I, I have thoughts, and and I'll tell you what they are. Okay. So it says Anton Fuqua is set to direct Michael, a Lionsgate drama telling the complex life story of the iconic singer Michael Jackson. I don't know how they're going to tell his whole life. There is so much nuance there that I do not know if they are going to be able to capture all of it. I really don't. Um, A script is in by John Logan, and the film will be produced by uh, Graham King, who turned the Freddie Mercury Queen story into a blockbuster Oscar Best Picture nominated Bohemian Rhapsody. I heard so many stories about that. I heard that before when uh, Sasha Baron Cohen was going to play uh, um, uh, in Bohemian Rhapsody, that movie. Uh, Freddie Mercury, sorry, uh, had a little bit of a blank that that the band did not like his script because he was trying to, like, make a joke out of it kind of thing. And they were just like not having it. And they they didn't he didn't want to do like a serious kind of thing. And I was like, "Mm, you got it. You got to make it like real and stuff. But anyways, okay, sorry. This we're talking about Michael. So it says uh, but but I'm glad that uh, Graham King is involved because maybe, uh, you know, he, he can make sure that this is a hit. So it says GK Films will produce alongside the co-executors of Jackson's estate, John Branca and John McClain. It says, turning uh, Mercury's complicated rise, fall, and triumph comeback into a film that won Best Actor for Rami Malek. He did such a good job in that movie. Uh, Might have been an easier task than the moonwalking over landmines that will have to be done with Jackson's story. So true. You have to deal with the... the, uh, the P file stuff, uh, you have to deal with that and that whole, you know, uh, that whole thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched that documentary where like looking at little little kids buttholes and stuff, but uh, it was it was very interesting uh, and, you know, and suspect. Uh, and then you have to deal with his transformation. He went from a black dude to a white woman. It was crazy. I don't know about you guys, but his trans and his trans. Hold on, let's go back up to this picture. He looks way better here than he does here in both of these. He looks so good here, but here he looks terrible. What's that nose? Come on, uh, poor guy. Uh, he had he had. I don't know what was his deal. I feel bad for him, but at the same time, I don't know. Anyways. Anyone who has seen the job that Anton Fuqua did with Will Smith's uh, starred uh, em- Emancipation, I did not see that. I got rid of Apple Plus, um, although I'm going to have to start it back up because uh, Ted Lasso 3 is coming out. Um, but I didn't see that. Anton Fuqua is, is like a hit or miss kind of person, director with me, but we'll see. Um, might come away believing he hit a high water mark as a filmmaker because of his unflinching uh, telling of an often brutal story of the escape enslaved man Joseph. I mean, yeah, but we've seen that before. Like, I mean, come on. Um, this has long been a passion project for King and Logan, who teamed on the Oscar nominated Martin Scorsese directed Howard Hughes with The uh, Aviator, which is actually a pretty good movie. Uh, and his race to innovative, uh, to innovate before his mental illness and, uh, germaphobic obsessions overtook him. Sources tell us that the film will undoubtedly make the most of Jackson's musical accomplishments and recreation of, uh, seminal career highlights. 
beginning with the days he fronted the Jackson 5. See, that's another, uh, as a child, to his hit-making work as the biggest musical star in the world as an adult. See, this is the thing. I I, I don't know how they're going to do all of this in one movie. This is going to be have to be like a three-hour, like Avatar uh, 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 timed movie because I just know how they're going to fit all of that in there. I watched a mini-series of um, Michael Jackson and they did the the kids stuff and everything. And I'm just like, I don't know how you could fit all of this into one movie. I really don't. I really don't. Um, but but it will uh, also deal uh, squarely with the pedophile accusations, which they should touch on that because that's like a huge portion of that story. Uh, that do- that dogged his later years up to his death in 2019 at the age of 50 from a uh, cardiac arrest caused by a cocktail of uh, sedatives, which is so sad because I I I think he was taking those uh, sedatives by um, because it, back in the day he did a Pepsi commercial. Was it Pepsi or Coca Cola? He did a commercial for a soda company, and some hair uh, fire caught on his hair. And it burned him. And I, I, I read a story that they, ever since that he had just had constant pain. So it was hard for him to sleep. And that's why he took that stuff. And I was like, that's that's a bummer and sad. Um, yeah, I just I, I, I felt bad for him. Now, if the 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 P file stuff is real, uh, I don't feel bad for him. But at the same time, you know, he's not here. So, I mean, I don't know. I have strong thoughts about it. But I can't really talk about it right now because I don't know how YouTube handles that stuff and I don't need to get in trouble for for this nonsense. So it says uh, things are moving fast on Michael Fuqua is currently finishing the Equalizer three with Denzel Washington in Italy. I will be watching that and then he will turn his attention to this one production will begin later this year. And we've heard that Fuqua will draft his uh, emancipation and equalizer cinematographer Robert Richardson to be his side. That's a good choice. He did a good job there. Um the hope is that Michael will be a global juggernaut with Bo- like Bohemian Rhapsody, which grossed over 900 million worldwide and created a new appetite for the music of Queen, Lionsgate. Uh, I mean, I have always had an appetite for Queen's music, but, uh, you know, if they got new fans because of it, great. And hopefully Michael Jackson gets new fans because of this, although I don't think that his estate owns the rights to his music. I think, um, um, uh, what's it, The Beatle? Uh, owns that still i don't know though don't quote me on any of that i can't remember uh which beetle owns it uh paul paul mccartney lionsgate has worldwide rights here but will seek an overshore offshore partner and we've heard sony is squarely in the mix that studio turned into a hit the 2009 docu this is it compromised of footage of jackson rehearsing for a series of, of london concert when he died um, I watched that movie. It's it's pretty good. I feel bad that that concert didn't get, you know, uh, you know, people didn't really get to see that concert because of his um, passing. Um, but what are you going to do? You know, life is uh, life is life like that. Jackson's em- uh, uh, emergence as king of pop was filled with un, uh, unpredicted, uh, gosh, unprecedented achievement, including being really the first black singer to crack the regular rotation of videos on MTV, which they don't even play music on MTV anymore. Uh, his uh, introduction of the moonwalk while performing Billie Jean, uh, so good, on the Motown 25 yesterday, today, forever TV special in 1983 the year I was born, and incredible production values of the videos for Thriller, so good, Billie Jean, so good, and other songs, and setting all kinds of records for sales on and accolades. I want to talk about his music videos real quick, but this is a, kind of a long article, so we're just going to read some more of this, and then I'll get into it. On the other side of the coin, Jackson grew up bullied. I'm not going to read all of this, you guys. Let me just, because they talk about the Whitney Houston. Oh, here we go, here we go. Um... Yeah, just as the recent Winnie Houston film, I Want to Dance with Somebody, and the Baz Luhrmann directed Elvis, the latter of which learned uh, leaned into the singer's codependent relationship with greedy, uh, parasitic manager uh, uh, Colin, Colonel Tom Park. Her. The drama will come from uh, balancing the sides of Jackson's life and please his fans. Uh, Jackson's life and please his fans as well as standing up and not seeming like a whitewash 
Uh, we've heard the film might start later in this in his life and then look back on the upbringing that forged his incredible talent and work uh, ethic long with the damage it inflicted on uh, ultimately making Jackson a tragic musical figure. Anta Fuqua is a perceived and powerful filmmaker, uh, a perceptive and powerful filmmaker, and we feel very fortunate to have him uh, just talking about Anton Fuqua. Fuqua, who earlier this year directed videos with the likes of Prince, Lil Wayne, Tony Braxton. Okay. First films of my career were music videos. Okay, so it just talks about how he filmed, I don't know what that is. He filmed music videos. Speaking of music videos, I just want to talk real quick about one music video. Okay, so um, it's not, what is it? What song is it for? Um, Beat It, okay? So he did that music video. And in that music video, there's a knife fight, right? And him and this other dude, they put their arms together like this and everything. And then they tie them together, right? And then they they circle each other and they're just like swiping at each other and stuff. And me, I'm just like, I when every time I watch that video, I'm all like, why wouldn't you just be like, so when they hold hands like this um, and everything, why wouldn't you just be like, and fight? Why wouldn't you just be like, <laughs> right to the other guy's wrist? That's what I would have done. I mean, they didn't, they clearly didn't set any rules for that. And me, I'm just like, I'm sorry. And uh, when you come to a knife fight, there's no rules. There's no rules except for stabby, stabby, stabby. So I always I always laugh when I see that because I'm just like, that would have been a way funnier video, but they were trying to be all like serious and stuff and everything. Um, I also wonder if they're going to touch on his kids because his kids, I find his relationship with his kids fascinating. And I just don't, I just don't, um, I just don't know if they're going to do that because it's hard to, it's hard to like deal with it when you have kids involved because you don't want to like, you don't want to be mean to blanket, you know, uh, you know, cause I mean, what did blanket do? He just, you know, he just had his dad, you know, and the same with what's the girl's name. What's her name. It doesn't even matter. Um, but I am interested in seeing this. I'll definitely be there. 100%. Michael Jackson was a huge part of my life growing up. Uh, so I remember Thriller. You could go down to the video store. I know you, you youngsters, Gen Zers don't know what the video store is. But you could go down to the video store and rent on VHS Thriller because it was so long. It was like uh, uh, there was some other stuff on there, but it was a it was the music video on VHS. You can go down to the video store and rent it. That's how that's how like long it was. And plus, everybody loved it. Thriller was so good. Uh, if you don't like Thriller, that music video, you're weird. Um, but yeah, no, um, love Michael Jackson. Um, and unless uh, I have thoughts, I love his music. I can't say I love Michael Jackson. I, I he was a big weirdo, but I do love his music. Like so I'll love it forever. But I do have thoughts on certain things. I just don't know how. I just don't know how YouTube will handle it. And I'm I'm not. I can't. Uh, I I don't want my my channel to go away. So that's my thoughts on that. All right, so for my third and final story this week. Okay, so Disney is moving forward with their Tron Aries, so Tron 3 film, um, with uh, John Ronnie in talks to Helm to direct Jared Leto in the sci-fi sequel. Um, I don't know if this is a good choice. I personally like, I, first off, Tron. I know some people that don't like this movie. I have one friend that does absolutely does not like Tron. He thinks it's boring, which I get. I get that, but I love Tron, the first Tron. I love it. I love it a lot. The second Tron, I didn't hate Tron Legacy. I didn't hate it. There was just things I didn't like about it, uh, like, you know, the pacing and just like the overall like thought process of it. But there was a show, uh, an animated show, Tron... Um, something something i can't remember the name of it. it was a it was an animated show on d um was it d plus or d10 d10 disney 10 or whatever and it only lasts i think 13 episodes i really like that 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 one and then also there there was a video game that was like a, i think a lead into or a follow-up i think it was a lead into um uh the tron legacy movie which i the game was good i liked the game but you know what are you gonna do um, yeah, so I, I mean, so far Tron, I mean like this, I just don't know if this is good because that last movie, um, I think the last movie was the weakest, the weakest thing out of all the projects that they came out after the original Tron. Okay. So let's check out this one, this story. 
And this director, I I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I haven't read this article in advance because it just came out as of filming this. So I'm I'm just like, whatever. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you if this they don't mention what he's directed. So that's him right there with Jared Leto. By the way, I love Jared Leto. I'll talk about that in a minute. A new installment of Tron is coming back online. The dish hears that Disney is in early negotiations to set uh, Jump Chin, Jump Chim, I don't know, Ronnie <laughs> to direct. I'm just going to say Mr. Ronnie uh, to direct Jared Leto in Tron Aries, which is a good name, Tron Aries. I like that because Aries, he's the god of war. And if you remember from the last one, um, what's his face is trying you know, creating that army. He was creating that army to bring to our world to start a war and take it over. So it says the film is uh, crewing up, eyeing an August start date in Vancouver. Deals aren't complete yet, but this would mark the fourth collaboration between Disney and the Norwegian filmmaker who helmed, there we go, Mal Ma Ma Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. First off, Maleficent 2 was not good. It wasn't good. It was bad. And Pirates of the Caribbean 5 was not good. It was bad. But but whatever. It's fine. He's This, this guy's just trying to, to make a living, you know? He has wrapped for the studio the Disney uh, Ridley starred Young Woman and The Sea. I don't know what that what, what that movie is, but uh, I mean, so, okay. About a daring journey of uh, Gertrude uh, Edgerl. Mm -hmm. A New York teen who became the first woman to swim across the English Channel. Okay, cool. Uh, Jeff Na uh, Nathison scripted it and Jerry Bruckheimer produces with him. Okay, cool. Good for him. Not dissing on anybody. I'm just saying. Now it's on the D uh, Disney sci-fi franchise which began with the 1982 film that starred Jeff Bridges, love Jeff Bridges, and was set inside the computer program called The Grid, uh, where a computer hacker is abducted and, uh, abducted and forced to participate in the gladiatorial games. The first one wasn't more than a cult favorite, so true, though its special effects were seen as game-changing at the time. That is also true now. They just seem so dated. It's like that, that game Pong, uh, with the thing, although I still love Pong. I would play Pong all day, every day. It's so good. Uh, but those there, they are very dated now. Uh, that following the swell around the film in years to come, as it played on cable, only helped grow its popularity to the point where Disney decided to move forward with a sequel, Tron Legacy, in 2010. With Bridges reprising his role and Garrett Headland and Olivia Wilde joining the franchise. I don't know if they're, Olivia Wilde can be in this now because she is toxic. Uh, that film grossed $400 million globally, and, uh, and Disney has been trying to figure out how to continue the franchise since. I, I thought they should have, if they were going to do it to make it an animated movie, like that cartoon that they made. Um, but, I mean, obviously they're going to make, I mean, a, a live action one. The studio got close in 2017 with Leto. Now it will be in the hands of Ron, Mr. Ronnie, who early on broke into Hollywood co-directing with uh, Espen Sandberg Contiki. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 2013 film that was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film, um, Oscar and Chronicle Thor uh, epic 2,000, uh, 4,300 mile crossing of the Pacific ocean. And he's doing one about a woman that swam across a, a, a body of water, him and people in water, whatever, uh, on a balsam wood raft in 1947, young woman at the sea isn't, uh, slotted yet, but it has been testing strong. The Tron Aries script is by Jesse Wit, uh, Wituto. Wig Wiguto and is considered the sequel to Tron Legacy, which was directed by Top Gun Mavericks Joe uh Kaczynski. Joe Kaczynski. Mm. Sean Bailey and Sam uh Dickerman <laughs> are the execs. The producers are these people. Leto, who will who who next will co-star in Disney's Haunted Mansion, is repped by some people that we don't care about. Okay, first things first. Um, I love Jared Leto. I'll watch anything that man is in. I, I'm just a big fan of his. Um, you want to watch a really good movie that he's in? Go watch Mr. Nobody. I love him in that movie, and he is so good in that movie. Also, I liked him as Joker. I know a lot of people didn't, but I did like him as Joker. I just think they didn't give him enough to work with. I just, I personally would have liked to have seen what he was going to do with that, but 
that's not going forward, so we won't get that. Um, as far as this Ronnie guy, so far his work has not thrilled me, especially, you know, Maleficent 2 and Pirates of the Caribbean 5, the worst of those franchises. Um, I just, I don't know, man. But we'll see. I mean, he could pull it out. You never know. I mean, uh, yeah. As far as Tron Aries goes, uh, going forward, I, I again, I feel like they should have gone with an animated version of this instead of a live action version. And I don't know how this movie is going to fare if Olivia Wilde is in it because, and Jared Leto, really, I don't know if he's got a huge fan base. Like he's got me. I love him. And I love Tron, so I'll probably see this. But Olivia Wilde, I mean, she's, you know, I mean, from the, that Don't Worry Darling set she and that whole controversy there, she turned into a real, uh, you know, real crazy person. But we'll see. I don't know. Um, but good for both of them for, for getting the gig and, and pulling it through and everything. I just don't know how it's going to work out. All right, you guys, that is my final story of the week. Tell me, what do you guys think about all of this coming out this week? How do you feel about Chad Stahelski, uh, you know, getting to direct this uh, Rainbow Six movie with uh, Michael B. Jordan starring? Uh, you know, are you a fan of Chad Stahelski's? Are you not a fan? You know, what what is your favorite movie that he's done so far? You know, what do you expect to see from this movie? And who do you think they'll cast as the other Rainbow Six members? I'm quite excited about it. I think it's going to be good. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Uh, yeah. Um, and how do you feel about Anton Fuqua directing this Michael Jackson biopic? I mean, is this something that you're interested in, this biopic? Um, you know, are you a fan of Michael Jackson? Are you a fan of just his music? I'm, I'm mostly just a fan of his music. Um, but I can sympathize with certain things in his life and I that I feel bad for. Um, and then, uh, and Anton Fuqua, listen, I'm not like the hugest Anton Fuqua fan, but I'm glad that he got the work. I want the best for everybody. So yeah, and and I'll probably see this movie, you know, in theaters, the, day, the opening weekend. So, but we'll see how it turns out and everything and what it looks like. I need to see a trailer and who's going to play Michael uh, Jackson. And then finally, how do you guys feel about uh, Jared Leto and uh, Mr. Ronnie moving forward with this Tron Aries movie. Is this something that you're interested in? Are you a fan of Tron? Are you not a fan of Tron? You know, uh, what do you love about Tron? Did you see that animated show on Disney? Was it D10? No, it wasn't D10. I can't remember the name of their cartoon um, thing. And I can't remember the name of that that uh, Tron show. Uh, but yeah, and then did you did you play the... the uh, the um, a Tron Uprising, that's what it was called. Um, and then did you play the video game, the Tron video game? Because uh, I really liked that a lot. I, I thought it was super fun. But if you if you don't uh, if you don't want Tron Evolution was called. But if you didn't play that game, you can go watch the cutscenes, and I would suggest that too because the story is very interesting. They they deal with viruses in that one, which I always was like, why don't they have any viruses in here? But yeah, all right, you guys, that is my uh, my thing. Tell me what you guys think about all this. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you mention it. Please hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week on my Week in Review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey, nerds. If you like this video, go ahead and click that Eat What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.